The first event of the afternoon session will be the introduction of research network e-learning by Network One coordinator, Professor Bo Won Kim from Korea National Open University. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and my fellow colleagues in lifelong learning. My name is Bo Won Kim from Korea, Korea National Open University. Uh, I hope you to remember my name correctly. My name is Bo Won Kim because there are so many Kims in Korea. <laughs> About 20% of Koreans have their name as Kim as their surnames. So one of our family is leading North Korea. He's another Kim. Anyway, um, I'm happy to be here with you to talk about the present and future of the lifelong learning in Asian and European countries. And moreover, I feel highly uh, privileged to introduce EASM, the network one of the ASM Education and Research Hub for Lifelong Learning. Um, the network one has a name with it's very long. It is called Development of ICT Skills, E-Learning, and the Culture of E-Learning in Lifelong Learning. But in short, this network focuses on the use of E-Learning or ICT skills in the various levels of lifelong learning. The two keywords are of the network is are lifelong learning and uh, e-learning, the two poles. I myself have participated in this network from its kick-off meeting in 2005 in Copenhagen, Denmark, and have been working as coordinator of the network since uh, January last year. Okay. Uh, I'd like to divide my presentation into two parts. The first one is spent on the on adding some more general talk about the lifelong learning and e-learning. Uh, and then uh, the, and the second part, I'd like to introduce the history and what we are going, uh, going to do in the network one. Okay, I'd like to start my presentation with a couple of experience uh, in Korea and in my university. The first one is concerned with the ongoing economic crisis that has struck not only the Korean Peninsula, but also other countries. As you know, my university, Korea National Open University is an open university. The student enrollment in the open universities fluctuates more than the traditional universities. December last year, the people in the Office of uh, Student Recruiting in my university was having a very hard time because the enrollment for the, two, the year 2009 was estimated to decrease around 10%, 10%. I myself is in charge of the uh, Office of Planning of our university. The, so many parts of our budget were cut around 10%. But do not be surprised. Uh, in March this year, our new semester began, but the student enrollment was as ever, or a little increased, increased a little. So, uh, the percentage was not big, but we were relieved anyway. Our conclusion is like this. Even though they were troubled by the economic recess, economic slowdown, the people were investing more time and more money on their learning. They became lifelong learners. I named this change like this from lifelong job to lifelong learning. The society, the Korean society has been changing into a lifelong learning society and lifelong learning has become a must do in the Korean society. Frankly speaking, this shift or this change has be, ha, did began, began 12 years ago at the first economic crisis 
that struck the Asian countries, you know. At that time, the long-standing myth of a lifelong job collapsed and the idea of lifelong learning emerged. As you know, the growth of the Korean economy, after our independence in 1945 or 1950, Korean economy grew every year. Some shift, some change, but almost every year until 1997, it saw the steady growth. So, when the young people uh, graduate from the university, they were, not they were not worried if they go to a company, the job is okay until he, until the end of his year, his career. Until 60, it's okay. But the first economic crisis in 1997 made a big difference. So the, in a sense, before that time, the idea of lifelong learning was an, in a sense, abstract idea, but at that time, everything changed. It became a concrete reality, concrete reality. Okay, this year, uh, the student enrollments of the Open and Cyber University in Korea amount up to 20% of traditional universities. Every year, uh, this year, about 500,000 High school graduates come to universities in Korea, 500,000. But the, in the Austin University and cyber universities, the new students amount up to 100,000, almost 20%. Almost 20% students are uh, traditional universities amount. So, and the 60 or 70 percent of the new students are almost have their degrees. So in the cyber universities and in the open university, about 60 or 70 percent of students have want to have another degree, their second degree. So Korean society is changing, lifelong learning society. One thing more. Uh, this is about the uh, concerned with the government educational policy in March 2008, last year. A new government began in Korea, uh, led by M.B. Lee. Uh, the, the new team's idea was aiming at the smaller government, the MEST, Ministry of Education, Science and Technology, launched, merging two ministries. One is Minister of Education, the other is Minister of Science and Technology. So, um, it is now one of the biggest ministries in Korean government. The new ministry comprises 15 bureaus, 15 bureaus, education, science, and technology. One of the 15 is lifelong and vocational education bureau which survived, you understand, 15 bureaus. So I would like to show you what our government is focusing on. And the second tsunami, you know the word tsunami? The second tsunami struck the, this time, Minister of Education, MEST, May 2009, this year. The government reorganized the ministry. This time, they reduced the 70 divisions into 60. So 10 divisions disappeared. Many people left their jobs. In this case, they, in Korea, we say, take off their clothes. The same. Many people left their, uh, took off their clothes. But the department, a division of e-learning support. E-learning support division also survived. In conclusion, e-learning and lifelong, lifelong learning are two big holes supporting the future of the Korean economy. The government is focusing on the two. Okay. Before shifting to the introduction, I'd like to add one thing more concrete 
example, what technology can do. I told you e-learning and life learning. I'd like to show you what technology, what internet, what e-learning can do, can help enhancing the lifelong learning. The one example is my university, new tutoring model. As you know, in the open universities, tutoring is very important because in the distance learning, the big question is, big problem is relation, uh, interaction between teacher and student. So tutoring is really essential learner support device. So at KNO, the new tutoring model is, has four characteristics. One is internet-based. Second is department-based. So that is blended learning. We call it blended tutoring, offline and online tutoring. And the final one is group tutoring. I'd like to change your focus on the last one, group tutoring. As you know, the word tutoring, group tutoring is a kind of paradox. Tutoring means one-to-one -one teaching. Group tutoring is a kind of oxymoron, but paradox, right? But in our university, our university was established in 1972. It has its history almost amounts up to 40 years. We have in this spring semester 180,000 students this semester. We are a big university. But we cannot provide tutors for each student. It was our biggest question, biggest problem. Three or four years ago, we began a new tutoring model. So, it has uh, these kind of characteristics. A tutor operating uh, with his own home page. And each tutor is being in charge of around 150 students. The number 150 is really big. It does not make sense in the traditional point of view. We searched, we studied the Open University in Britain. In UK or OU, the student to tutor ratio, the ratio of student to uh, tutor is almost 20 or maximum 25. But that ratio cannot be applied to our university. Really big tutoring group. So I say group tutoring, big group tutoring is an inevitable choice, but having its own merits which small group tutoring may not aim at. The first one is learners sharing knowledge. Through the tutoring site, students share with other tutors their own learning tips, summaries of lectures, and study materials. They also exchange questions and answers with other tutors. In a sense, they, became, they become teachers. Even though we are speaking about the lifelong learning society, it means we become students. I say being a student is not a wonderful job. Everybody wants to be a teacher. They have something to talk. Uh, in a sense, in the tutoring website, the two T's, the students become teachers. They like it. In short, their knowledge and information are shared, shared within the tutoring group. A kind of a learning community is formed within the site. Second one is students' motivation activated. The peer tutees in the group serve not only as good helpers, but also as good willed competitors. The students' motivation for learning is activated by the peer tutees in the group. The adult learners feel as if they were young pupils again. Thus, they try to be a good boy or girl and to be a best student. Okay, the third one is students enjoying companionship. 
Studying at the distance university drives adult learners into hardships, as you know. They feel consoled and comforted when they meet their companions. They feel as if they were not alone in the long and lonely journey. In the often universities, in the cyber universities, the student retention is very important question and agenda. This sense of companionship is a merit the students hardly expect in the individual or small group tutoring. And finally, almost the same one as the third one, the sense of get-togetherness. This is a characteristic Asian sentiment. I do not want to divide the Asia from Europe. Asian people are believed to feel more contented and secured when they belong to a group or larger unit. We find the traditional we feeling more alive in Asian society than in other countries. So group tutoring touches this happy, important, and important psychology inherent in Asian people. Group tutoring is, this is my own coins, a happy marriage of technology and psychology. So uh, in Asian environment, in Asian circumstances, I think group tutoring, a big group teaching is a kind of merit, I think. So the teaching or tutoring, the learning should adapt themselves to a certain psychology, certain circumstances, certain culture, I think. OK, this is the, what I told you the, about the group tutoring at Korean National Open University. Uh, the application may be different anyway. I'd like to use, utilize e-learning or ICT skills for enhancing various levels of our lifelong learning. OK, let's go back to our mainstream, the introduction of EASM network. In May 2005, first ASM lifelong learning conference was held in Copenhagen, Denmark. In that meeting, four research networks were established Later, one more was added. The network one has name, its name as Development of ICT Skills, e-learning, and the course of e-learning in lifelong learning. And in July 2005, KNOU was appointed as coordinating university of network one. And February 2006, the network project statement developed. And we named our network as EASM. The name EASM was born. In September 2006, Asia Europe e-learning colloquy on university cooperation was held in Seoul. In a sense, this was the first EASM network meeting. Uh, many representatives, scholars, and researchers from Europe and Asian countries came to Seoul and talked. And the se Next year, in November 2006, uh, the same year, EASM web page opened. This is our main playing ground. Main playing ground. I hope you to remember EASM.knou.ac.kr. And next year, October 20, 2007, EASM network follow-up meeting was held in Seoul. This was the second meeting. And the next year, in November 2008, EASM network meeting held in Beijing. Many of you, we have met in Beijing last November, and here in July 2009, network, another meeting, network meeting was held in Bangkok. This is our uh, homepage, easmknou.ac.kr. It, it has uh, five main menus. The first one is e-learning publications, Second one is e-learning professional development. Third one is e-contents. And fourth one is collaborative research. And the final one is e-learning conference. I will, I, I will even explain in detail. In February 2006, seven projects were set up by KNOU. 
it's not clear. Uh, it has a big picture. The picture is composed of online journal, ASM Cooperative Research, ASM E-Learning Academy, ASM E-Mentoring System, ASM E-Learning Conference, E-Content, E-Learning Online Expo. This big picture. And last year, in 2008, among the seven projects suggested in 2006, three projects were chosen for our practical cooperation practical activities. And it was started by EASM team in our university. It's the Institute of IDE, Institute of Distance Education at KNOU. So we started and we uh, introduced the three projects to EASM members at the Beijing conference in November last year and discussed them with the members to expand them how to operate, how to proceed with the three projects. And this spring in 2009, nine partners from six countries, Denmark, Latvia, Malaysia, Portugal, Thailand, and UK, six countries, nine partners participate we uh, agreed to participate in the project. And the day after tomorrow, we'll talk about it in detail in our network meeting. And the first one is e-learning publications. Its objective is to share quality information of e-learning and lifelong learning related publications among ASEM member countries. Its operation strategy is collecting recommended publications from professionals of e-learning and lifelong learning and providing their comments on the publications. The outcomes are the following. Okay, these, uh, this page is e-learning publications. It has book list, journal list, article list, and others report website. Every information is given in the list. The items are, numbers are up to amount 62. And this shows the one of the book list. Its title is Global Perspectives on E-Learning, Rhetoric and Reality. The author is Alison A. Carr, chairman. Here, language, and description shows the outline of the book. Let's go to the project two. Project 2 is called e-learning professional development. Its objective is to provide information on short-term courses, workshops, and degree courses for the e-learning specialists and policy makers. Operation strategies are collecting each country's e-learning courses, certificate or degree courses, and providing the information on the EASM website. And second one is translating parts of two courses of department e-learning at KNOU. This is graduate course, and posting them on the EASM website. The outcomes are as follows. Okay, this is certificate programs, postgraduate and undergraduate courses. The item list amount 22. And this is course for tutor operator. This is made by Iwa Credu in Korea. The language is Korean. This is the link. Uh, link address. Okay. The project three is e-content, e-learning contents. Its objective is to help members to share each country's e-content development strategy and trend. Its operation strategy is collecting the award-winning quality e-content, e-content materials of each country and sharing them with the members. And its outcomes, uh, information on 103, content in seven areas. Uh, e, this project three is comprised of seven, okay, seven subjects, fields. One is e-business, e-culture, e-entertainment, e-government, e-health, e-learning, e-science. Seven subjects composed the this project. Okay. Here is a, one example. 
This content is named Paris, a Roman city, uh, produced in 2003. Its language is English and French, and so on. The number four, this year's a special uh, project. We call it white paper. Mm, in the meeting in November last year in Beijing, uh, we talked about our future uh, activities. We agreed to produce a white paper. So uh, this spring we began it at KNOU. Its objective is to promote mutual understanding of status of e-learning in lifelong learning in ASEM member countries and to propose policy recommendations for e-learning in lifelong learning. In a sense, this is a, a you know, basic uh, foundation work for our future activities. Uh, this, uh, we sent our notice to our members. The 11 members from seven countries agreed to participate in this uh, white paper project. Denmark, Finland, Indonesia, Korea, Malaysia, Slovak Republic, and Thailand agreed to participate. So at the end of this year, or uh, at least uh, at spring next year, the a book with white paper, uh, named the white paper, will be produced. Um, and at the next ASEM conference, we will present the white paper. Okay. Now, I'd like to finish my presentation. Uh, you know, I heard that almost 300 participants gathered here. Uh, Everyone of you are encouraged to log into our website, our homepage, and to use EASM homepage for quality information, e-learning publications e-learning professional development, and e-contents, and to participate in the network as members to share and improve your e-learning expertise in the various levels of lifelong learning. Almost my time is over, and my presentation is almost over. Thank you. Hope